Oxyfuel processes such as heating, cutting, brazing, and welding create a potential danger from flames, sparks, and intense heat. Despite these hazards, millions of people work accident-free every year. By design, manufacturers build safe equipment. This decreases the likelihood of a potential incident. However, good oxyfuel operators know that their own safety, as well as the safety of those around them, depends on proper and responsible use of oxyfuel equipment. This video will help you learn more about oxyfuel technology, equipment, operation, and safety principles. To explain these fundamentals are Ken Heinrichs, a welding and metal fabrication instructor, and Tim Taylor, a welding and cutting expert. Ken, with all the people in the workplace, whose responsibility is it for safety? It's not about what you're doing or what your official job title is. Just remember, safety is everyone's responsibility. And I agree 100%. It's mm. everyone's responsibility. Victor has gathered additional material to support this video. When you see this torch tip icon, look for additional training material on this DVD, as well as in your training kit. Now let's get started. The four most common oxyfuel processes are cutting, heating, welding, and brazing. The technology fundamentals and safety principles apply equally to each of these processes. The foundation for all oxyfuel processes is commonly called the triangle of combustion, or fire triangle. Combustion requires three elements, fuel, oxygen, and heat. It's your responsibility to control each of these elements. Now, here's our first safety tip. Good housekeeping is important. Ken, will you tell us a little bit about good housekeeping? Good housekeeping simply means keeping your work area free of combustible materials. Items such as oily rags, paper, flammable liquids, and trash cans need to be removed from the area. Remember, you're going to have sparks, and those sparks can hit anything in your work area. What about smoking? Tim, it should go without saying that there's no smoking around cylinders, but it needs to be reinforced. Also, never use matches or lighter to light the torch. The only approved tool for lighting a torch is the spark lighter. Tim, can you tell us some of the obvious hazards associated with oxyfuel cutting and heating? Sure. Um, of course, the most obvious is the flame itself and the sp sparks it produces. However, it also will produce a small amount of infrared rays. Mm. and we, not, we must protect our eyes as well as our skin. Mm -hmm. Now, let's start with eyewear. I prefer a face shield with a shaded lens. However, mm -hmm. if you do use this, make sure that you use the appropriate safety glasses underneath. Mm -hmm. You can use goggles, or I know, Ken, you prefer the, the, yeah. the safety glasses. That's right. Um, anyone is fine. What else do we need, Ken? What else should I be looking for? Well, you definitely need to wear the appropriate gloves and clothing. In fact, the clothing I recommend you wear are a pair of blue jeans and a denim shirt. Cotton duck material is also okay. Mm -hmm. But I'll tell you, in addition to wearing those, what I like to wear is a lab coat or a welding jacket. But you need to be sure to button up the collar of your shirt as well as the sleeves. And for obvious reasons, you never keep paper in your pocket while using a torch. And you never roll up the sleeves of your shirt or cuff your pant legs as they provide a perfect area to catch sparks and slag. What about boots? When it comes to shoes, you can't beat a good pair of leather boots. But Tim, whatever you do, don't wear boots made from synthetic material, as molten metal will burn right through them. That's a good point, Ken. And you know there's a lot of companies that won't allow you in the door without a good pair of leather steel-toed boots. That's right. Wherever and whenever you work, remember these safety fundamentals. Understand the triangle of combustion. Keep your work area clean. Always use proper personal protective equipment. Wear appropriate clothing. If you work in your street clothes, choose tightly woven fabrics made from natural fibers. Wool is naturally flame retardant, but never wear polyester fleece or other flammable synthetics. Lastly, make sure appropriate fire extinguishing equipment is easily accessible and that you know how to use it. Depending on where you work, there may be additional safety requirements, 
so check with your safety manager or supervisor. Everyone knows what a cylinder is, but do you know how to properly identify, handle, and place a cylinder in your work area? Let's start with identification. A common mistake is to assume a cylinder color indicates a specific gas. Tim, there really aren't any standards when it comes to a cylinder's color, are there? Uh, you're right, there isn't. Unfortunately, there's not. A uh, distributor or gas supplier can paint his cylinders any color he wants, simply mm. for identification. Good example is we have an acetylene here that's green and an oxygen that's orange. It could just as easily be black and red. Mm. It really doesn't make any difference. Mm. We want to make sure that we don't try to identify the contents by the color of the cylinder. In fact, to identify a cylinder's contents, just read the label. And if there's not a label on your cylinder, don't use it. You need to contact your gas supplier and ask him to take it back. Cylinders also have a United Nations, or UN, gas identification marking on their label. Here are some common UN ID numbers. You'll also find these in Section 14, Transport Information, of Material Safety Data Sheet. Careless handling can turn a gas cylinder into a projectile. Whenever you handle a cylinder, keep these five fundamentals in mind. Before moving a cylinder, install the cylinder cap, if there is one. Use a cart designed to transport cylinders. Place cylinders in a safe location where they're protected from sparks, flames, and heat sources. Don't block equipment or people. Once in place, secure the cylinders in an upright position to prevent tipping or falling. Lastly, inspect the valve, look for signs of damage, and always ensure the valve is free from oil and grease.